Thanks very much for having me to join you uh, by video recording. I'm sorry I couldn't be at the conference to take part in the discussions of this vital issue. Uh, we're returning to the topic of unemployment after a period of uh, more than 15 years of uninterrupted expansion in economic output, a period which unfortunately was largely wasted in terms of the chance for a sustained and sustainable return to full employment. Uh, the period started reasonably promisingly with the Keating government's Working Nation program, uh, but that program was scaled back in the final budget of the Keating government, abandoned altogether by the Howard government. And after that, we really saw unemployment drop off the policy radar. Uh, the Howard government disclaimed any responsibility for full employment and did very little for the unemployed. Every now and then we would see populist measures directed at the unemployed, such as the Work for the Dole program. Uh, essentially a cut down job creation program, but one surrounded uh, by punitive rhetoric rather than by any real desire to put people into jobs. And so although the unemployment rate finally, towards the end of this period, fell back to relatively low rates, uh, we remain with a, a large pool of discouraged workers, uh, uh, workers withdrawn from the labour force and so on, and we're now uh, facing the problem of dealing with the pro problem of unemployment once again in the context of the uh, worst global recession uh, for many decades, in all probability the worst global recession uh, since the Great Depression. Uh, we in Australia hope to avoid the worst of this, uh, but uh, it's uh, still inevitable that we're going to see a substantial unemployment problem emerge. Now employment and unemployment move in line with cyclical fluctuations in economic activity, uh, but typically with a lag. Uh, the uh, financial shocks that generated the current crisis have been uh, emerging and amplifying for the past couple of years. Uh, the US, for example, has been officially judged to have been in recession since December 2007, uh, but the rise in unemployment uh, took place much later. And so we typically see a lag of between two and four quarters uh, between the onset of a decline in economic activity and the corresponding rise in unemployment. Now, in the recessions of the early post-war period, uh, up probably until the 1980s, uh, we saw a similar pattern in the recovery phase, that is, uh, uh, unemployment uh, uh, recovered following output, but with a lag again of two to four quarters. But in the recession, uh, the 1990 recession in Australia and the US, and also in the uh, 2000 recession in the US and, and elsewhere in the developed world, uh, we've seen a more disturbing pattern emerging where although the, uh, the lag between the decline in activity and the decline in unemployment hasn't changed much, uh, the lag in the recovery in activity and the recovery in unemployment is much longer. And this is the phenomenon that's variously called uh, jobless recovery, jobless growth and so forth. And so uh, in the 1989-1981 recession, unemployment was still rising uh, some years after the uh, uh, recession as measured in terms of output had been declared over. And uh, it took a very long time indeed, indeed as I mentioned, 15 years before we saw unemployment return to pre-recession levels. Now, looking at this output employment distinction, we see that the Australian government's response to the crisis so far has focused mainly on measures designed to stimulate and sustain output. And that makes fairly good sense because uh, the big concern is that we will see the kinds of cascading uh, output shocks that have occurred in so many other countries. So we've seen measures such as uh, cash handouts with an encouragement to uh, spend those on consumer goods and infrastructure projects uh, which really uh, aimed at sustaining activity in the construction sector. Although those measures have beneficial effects on unemployment, and we've seen some estimates of those, uh, they're not likely, certainly in their first round effects, uh, to be nearly as cost effective uh, as measures directly targeted at employment. So the justification for these measures is to sustain the overall level of economic activity, uh, prevent a downward multiplier effect from emerging. Now we can see this in the um, May federal budget, uh, the budget projects that in the absence of the stimulus package, unemployment will reach 8.5% uh, next year. Even with the stimulus package, it's expected to be well above 7%. But uh, compared to the uh, prompt and vigorous and large-scale response to uh, maintaining economic activity, there's really very little in the budget uh, that could be said to be directed at the problem of unemployment. Uh, most obviously and notably, uh, no increase in unemployment benefits, even though um, old age pensioners received an increase in their benefits, further widening the gap between uh, old age pensioners and, um, and the unemployed. Uh, 
that was justified, uh, not uh, uh, by any means uh, entirely justifiably, but uh, under Howard government by the notion that uh, in, the, in this long boom, a substantial part of unemployment had a voluntary character to it, that the unemployed needed to be given a spur to re-enter the labour market. To the extent that justification had any merit at all, it has clearly disappeared uh, in the current crisis. It's going to be very difficult both for the newly unemployed uh, losing their jobs in this crisis and for those who are unable to find work before the crisis to regain employment any time in the near future. Uh, there's also um, uh, 1.5 billion for the Jobs and Training Compact, much of which had been announced before the budget, uh, and mostly on training, which is good long-term policy, uh, but only of limited value uh, for people who are out of work. Uh, there's also a $650 million jobs fund designed to support local uh, jobs in local areas hardest hit by the downturn. Again, a worthwhile initiative, but uh, in the context of a $50 billion deficit and tens of billions of dollars on infrastructure, uh, really a fairly small-scale initiative. What that means, I think, uh, is not to, to criticise the government for its actions so far, but to stress the point uh, that we're going to need a further stimulus package. And I think that's uh, clear in a number of countries around the world, uh, both those that have engaged in some stimulus and those that haven't, that the likelihood that we will see a recovery sufficiently strong to generate uh, a sustained recovery in employment from the crisis is quite small. We really need to look at a further stimulus package. Uh, and uh, this should be targeted at employment and it should be introduced rapidly. I mentioned the Working Nation program. It was in many ways a, a, um, a well-designed and well-thought-out program, but it wasn't introduced until well after the depths of the recession had been reached. Uh, so we saw in the context of the general fiscal stimulus the benefits of acting early. The Rudd government has acted earlier than most other governments and we've seen uh, the beneficial consequences of that in avoiding the worst consequence of the recession. We need similarly prompt and vigorous action on unemployment, uh, focusing both on uh, expanding areas of the economy that are employment intensive and that's typically services, many of them publicly funded services such as health, education, uh, law and order, uh, community services of all kinds, uh, but also active labour market policies directed to the unemployed. Now there are a range of, of policies that are typically considered under the banner of active labour market policies uh, and they each have their merits, they're each better at different times of the cycle. So uh, most of the time the best thing to provide the unemployed with is training, both uh, specific vocational training, uh, general job readiness training, and ideally uh, looking at the entire labour market, uh, the kind of general education that produces flexible workers capable of moving uh, from one career to another as is necessary over the life course. That's best in normal times, but it really is not of very much use in the, con in the downturn phase of a recession when employers are laying off staff, uh, they're not really that interested in the question of uh, people who have done relatively short courses aimed at improving their job readiness. A uh, second uh, range of policies is wage subsidies of various kinds. These can be either the removal of disincentives to employment such as payroll tax or explicit subsidies for, for employers who hire out of the pool of, of long-term unemployed. Uh, these are useful in recessions but again uh, most useful in the, uh, in the early stages of recovery when employers are starting to hire and when uh, the, the need is to give them incentives to take people on rather than, uh, for example, expanding the hours of those, those workers that they've kept on, kept on staff. So the third alternative and one that um, we need to fight for each time, unfortunately, in a recession is direct job creation. So uh, long derided as, as painting rocks white and so forth and there's no doubt that uh, job creation projects can be of that kind if the focus is on making the unemployed work rather than on uh, matching unemployed workers with unmet social needs. So it's important that we shouldn't restrict the, restrict the range of job creation projects by, for example, excluding anything that might normally be done in the course, say, of the activities of, of governments or councils. We should be looking at uh, directly expanding jobs uh, with the hope that these will lead to a permanent expansion in employment. Uh, we really need to focus on this area in the context of the downturn phase of the recession and the likelihood of a fairly long period of a flat, uh, weak uh, unemployment demand and therefore uh, rising employment and underemployment continuing well after output has started to recover.
So to conclude, uh, the Rudd government has moved early and effectively uh, to deal with the, the threat of a sharp downturn in economic activity in Australia. We need equally effective action on the employment front and we need it now. Time is running out. Thank you.